Hello, fellow Araxians. Welcome back. I'm Commander Sirius. Well, we just finished up the second and probably final round of public playtesting. Osher is just around the corner, but to me, some of the really big news is not just the continent, but all the quality of life changes and fixes that come along with it. Let's go planetside. So soldiers, as always, the stuff that tends to be a really big deal is kind of found in the small print at the bottom of the patch notes. Let's go through the changes we already know about, and there's probably more that are going to roll out the day they release it live. First we have Friendly Fire is getting nerfed, otherwise known as the new conglomerate getting buffed. So the Friendly Fire you receive and dish out is going to be cut in half, and grief points generated by causing Friendly Fire is cut in half as well. This is a controversial change. What's great about it is it's really going to help new players. Battles are crazy. They're hectic. They're throwing frags around and before they know it, their weapon's locked. That's not fun. Also, it's going to help with situations like this where people are trying to TK your Sunder. People have different opinions on where and when you should be fighting. But the reality is it's a sandbox game. You shouldn't have to give up a good farm at the exciting fight to go stand in a Zerg on the other side of the map just because you might be able to take a little bit of territory over there. The issue you're going to have is Friendly's more willing to throw frag bombs into the melee because it's not that big a deal if they hit their friends anymore. That being said, both sides will be able to do that, so I feel like that balances it out. The balls on point are already such a hectic mess. At least now you'll be less likely to come away with a weapons lock. Next up, we have spawn system adjustments. We honestly don't know what this is really yet. We're really going to need live conditions to test this out. War assets are going to play a big part of spawns on Osher. They do want to make the fights a little more logistics based. That does require taking out some of the ease of use of the redeploy side system. So yes, they're going to touch the system, but guys, I would be prepared for just kind of minor tweaks rather than full overhaul. The Cobalt is getting a nerf. Now it's funny, I've called this before. I've seen a lot of members of the community call for it before. And then once it happens, I've seen a lot of people upset about it. Now, the Marauder, which you're watching here, was gutted a year ago, and don't worry, it still works well enough. The argument for a powerful Cobalt is the fact that you have powerful light assaults killing off spawns. Cobalt is a great way to deal with it. So I definitely don't think we can talk about the Cobalt in a vacuum, but without a doubt, the Cobalt's primary purpose right now is for farming infantry that aren't a threat to the vehicle game. For the cheap cost of 200 nanites, you can get two of them on a Sunderer. Durable, but easily destroyed. It definitely got balanced out a little bit more on the Harasser when the Harasser nanite cost went up. But still, the massive agility of the Harasser and the ability to sneak into good angles makes it such a powerful infantry farming platform. And that's its problem. That's the light you have to look into it of what they're really balancing against. It's just not fun to play against his infantry. I think people's fears are rooted in what happened to the Fury. It went from hands down the best Sunderer weapon, amazing against infantry, passable against vehicles, to nearly useless. And it's really disappointing to pick up a weapon again when you remember it in its overpowered state. So guys, it will hurt, but I urge you to look at the benefits to the infantry fights. The sustained damage of a fully magazine upgraded Cobalt was just outrageous. It's going to be better for the new players. It's going to make the game feel less pay to win because the Basilisk will be pretty much in line with it at this point. And the Basilisk having AV damage will make it the better choice in most scenarios. So soldiers, rip in pieces to your Cobalt farms, but I promise you, overall, it will make the experience much better. Okay, next up. This is a big, exciting one that has been asked for for a very long time. We are getting a heads-up compass. I really hope they make it toggleable on your UI. But rather than having to kind of quickly reach back to your minimap and say, wait, which way am I facing? Now, right along the top of your HUD, you will have a compass. It will be much easier to call out where the bad guys are coming from or where you are trying to send your armor column to. Okay, soldiers, next up, we have a nerf coming in for the Amaterasu. 
Currently the weapon does 450 damage out to 2 meters and then falls off to 143 at 50 meters. They are raining the weapon back in by making the projectile only last till 15 meters. I don't know if that means it falls off to 143 at 15 meters, which would be a pretty significant nerf. That said, just the fact that you can reach out with it already makes it significantly more powerful than most knives. It's sort of like having a second pistol, or if you're using some of the ASP rewards, it's like having two primaries and a pistol. Currently on the test server, the Amaterasu does work underwater, so that's pretty powerful. I don't know if they plan to maintain that functionality. If so, this balance pass will definitely help make sure it's not the only weapon to use underwater. Now these were the notes that came out with the first test build. There was also the sort of just general quality of life notes at the bottom. They include hopefully a fix for the lean bug. Sometimes you, when you spawned at a Sundra that was at an angle, your character would kind of walk around tilting. They hopefully pulled the one man squads out of the squad finder so they're not cluttering it up. And the big one that I'm excited about is they changed it so that if a vehicle like an aircraft or vehicle terminal is hacked at a base, that does not stop you from remote spawning your vehicles at that base. There's been an issue for a while where you look at a base, you see nothing's hacked, at least all the terminals, and you still can't remote spawn a vehicle there. And one of the theories was that even if just one turret was hacked, that could stop remote spawning. But it's been just a general pain in the neck. So they're making it so that no matter what, if stuff's hacked, you can still pull. If you are actively trying to do sabotage, you can still do it. You just have to destroy the terminals rather than hack them. So I think this is a great happy medium fix. It does not stop you from sabotaging the back lines if that's your goal. And the faction that controls the base won't have to go through the frustration of why can't I spawn vehicles. Okay guys, now we're into the notes from the second test build. Bastion pull terminals have been eliminated from Osher. I don't know if this is temporary long term, but I do think it's a really good idea for launch because you're gonna get a lot of new players coming back. Just having Bastions going around farming them all is not a good way to do it. And on top of that, Bastions are an extremely powerful logistics platform. So I definitely think it would provide more imbalance on Osher than it would on other continents. The Banshee is finally getting a nerf. I'm sure it's not enough for most people, but they're taking 25% of the splash radius off of it. That will mean an overall damage reduction and you will have to be more accurate with it. Some simple ones, they're bringing the cost of the Lodestar down to 450 in line with the Galaxy. They didn't say prototype Lodestar, so I don't know what that means. And they're tuning the Nanite and Cordium cost on the Wasp as well. Okay, those are kind of the small ones. Now let's get into some of the bigger ones. They mentioned that there was a planned change for construction with this update, since Osher was going to rely more on logistics. I think most people and myself were looking for a pretty major overhaul for how construction worked. I see a lot of promise in it, it just hasn't lived up to that yet. But what it is playing out as is it's going to be some minor tweaks to hopefully make it play a little bit better. So to start, it's something I'm very sad about. The Ant Cloak is going away. Rest in pieces, Transport Cloak, moment of silence. Good night, sweet lock-on dodger module. Good luck hiding from all the liberators that are just roaming around the back line trying to farm the cordium farmers. The sea barrier that is like the overshield is getting a buff, so it seems like that might be the go-to. I gotta say, I really liked the cloak. I saw its imperfections for sure, and that is farming infantry. The ability to stay cloaked for a long time and run things over is very powerful. But as a su support vehicle that doesn't have a lot of options to defend itself against tanks or liberators, it was key to its survival being able to kind of just fade away. And there's nothing worse than farming up 10,000 cordium, making it way your back to your base, and oh, a liberator finds you and pops you real quick with the tank buster and a Dalton. Cordium traditionally was relatively scarce and slow to mine. 
Now let's bring in some of the other changes and then maybe it's more palatable that we're losing this. Cordium mining in general is getting a big buff. Mining speed is doubling for the default miner and its deposit speed is getting normalized to be the same as its new mining speed. So you guys could go out and test this right now. Compare the difference between mining versus depositing in a silo. The new rate for both is gonna be faster than depositing in a silo right now. This is a pretty big quality of life fix. The challenge of mining cordium is going to be not dying, not having to sit there for five minutes while you try to mine a node. And I think that's a great design direction where it's really about trying to stay alive, not time of exposure just while you're left clicking. Now the Howler mining laser is getting a buff up to 800. So this is the laser that has a cooldown, much like the engineer repair tool. Currently it's not quite double the speed of the default model. And now they're going to normalize it at double the speed. It does not look like they're gonna change the deposit pace but this thing will be mining on steroids. And then they're also going to increase the cordium that's in existing nodes. So the small nodes that are 2,000 will go to 4,000, and the medium nodes that are 6,000 will go to 8,000. So without having to do the work of adding more spawn node locations on the existing continents, they are buffing the amount of cordium that is there. They are also buffing the top-mounted cordium miner and the cordium miner on the wasp. So soldiers, the overall effect to me is that they're making Cordium more disposable. Easier to come by, not so devastating if you lose an ant full of it because you can pick some more up pretty quick. It's not originally how I thought of making construction more fun. I like resource scarcity. At the same time though, that concept of scarcity can turn into tedium really quick and you don't want it to feel tedious in the game. I can honestly say this definitely feels like the path of least resistance to making construction work better. And for now, that's what we need. With OSHA right on the horizon, we just need construction to work better because it's going to play a bigger role. I wish I spent more time farming my infantry squish kills for my ant directive. I'd say you've got maybe a week left to go do it. So get out there, squish a lot of planet men and women because pretty soon you're going to have to do it the old fashioned way where they're all going to see you coming. Big shout out to Vampire321, just a random person that hopped in my ant and we had a blast raging across Indar. I love these moments in Planetside where you all of a sudden connect with someone you didn't know him before and you'll probably never see him again. But for a few minutes, you're an awesome, amazing team that feels like you've been together forever. Rest in pieces, little ant cloak. See, Barrio, you have some big shoes to fill. I hope you can stand in its place. One other note on vehicles, they are now adding a center of the screen reticle to vehicles. You've probably seen the red dot that's usually on the center of my screen. That is a crosshair overlay. I recommend everyone use them. They are approved by the developers, but it's great quality of life feature that they're building that right into the game. Quick reminder, it is center of the screen, not where your bullets are gonna go, okay? Depending on that weapon's drop or the vehicle camera angle, where your projectiles go will be different than the center of the screen, but you can account for that and having something in the middle gives you a good idea of how to fire in third person view. And finally, the big, massive, colossal, stupendous buff that is coming out. We saw it in the second test build patch. Squad beacons no longer have increased delays on spawn times. If you are a small, tight-knit, infantry-based squad, this is massive. I think there will be a lot of complaints about how the logistics-based gameplay will favor the Zerg. Making the spawn beacon in line with a traditional spawn, like a Sunderer or a base spawn, will be massive for small squad uptime. It is also going to feel a lot better in that you don't have to sit around at your desk screen so much. I can't tell how it's gonna play out. I do feel like this is semi-balanced because squad beacons are so fragile. EMP, Punisher, a lot of ways to take them out real quick. At the same time, in a squad, you've got 12 of them that can be deployed in a row. They are so replaceable. It's gonna be a powerful way to keep your squad coming back in. So, it scares me a little bit, but I think it's gonna make so many people happy 
hopefully it doesn't mean the randoms, the open platoons, just run into complete brick walls of infantry tight-knit outfits farming them. So, soldiers, there it is. I mean, everyone knows about Osher. It's exciting to get a new continent, a place where we don't know the ins and outs of every single base. But the things that will really affect the day-to-day -day gameplay are those little patches. I do expect a few more of them that they've probably been working on for a while are going to make its way into this round of patching. I will keep you updated when I see more of those. As of right now, at least according to the Sanctuary, Osher is supposed to come out within a week of this video. And I think barring any major game-breaking bugs, crashes, issues like that, they will go for it, even if it's a little bit of a push. So soldiers, buckle up and be ready for that action. I will be getting a video out on kind of my thoughts of the Osher continent in general. I've been sort of waiting for it to take its final shape because anything before the kind of last version is very speculative and I don't think there's much to talk about it there. But other than that, that's all I have for now. Thank you again to everyone you see here on the screen that have been a member past, present, or if you're going to be in the future. Appreciate you hitting that member button. That will be it for now, fellow Araxians, and until next time, I'm Commander Sirius, and I will see you Planetside.